Hey guys, it's me. I'm back. Um, took a slight, few, a few days off last week, and but I was still posting on YouTube, as you can tell. Um, yeah, I spent a lot of time at the beach in the ocean because I needed it, and I think a lot of people are needing a little de-stressing right now, and they're on vacation. So um, I was thinking, what am I gonna paint for today? What am I gonna talk about today? Hmm. I don't know, because I'm just kind of in that phase where. I have like a million ideas or a million things I want to do and don't know what to do. And sometimes you guys go through that also. And what do I do to get out of that? Um, sometimes I just paint colors. Sometimes I just paint objects. Sometimes I just look around for hours. But I think I'm going to do something a little bit different today. So uh, yesterday I had painted a new acrylic painting on my acrylic channel. This is the painting. Uh, it's an like ocean painting with some flowers. like. California poppies in the front, really thick. You can feel the little texture on here. Um, this 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 channel I have is another channel. It's another outlet. It's just acrylic painting. I don't want to do demos. I don't talk about it. Voiceovers. It's uh, becomes a lot of work when you do all that. So it's just easier for me to get another release of like artwork, and you can show another side of myself that you don't normally see. I also draw a lot too. <laughs> so I thought let's interpret this using a water medium. So let's do watercolor maybe some gouache also um, because if you just do watercolor you're gonna have to like mask out the little flowers here right and then paint the wash of watercolor or paint around it you could do that you can paint around it that's another way or um, you can just paint the water the water scene here the sky and you can use gouache flowers on top of it because gouache goes on top of all of that because it's opaque so, and if you haven't used gouache, I have a tutorial I'm going to link in here. Why well, I think gouache is amazing, and I've been using it for, I don't know, 20 something years. So, it's a great medium. It's also water based. They have gouache that's acrylic based. It's a little different, and I'll do a tutorial on how to use that um, where it comes in handy. But I use a lot of water based gouache, and it can kind of use it like watercolor. You can water it down like watercolor and play around with it. It's a lot of fun. So,. On that note, let's get started painting a coastal fun watercolor slash gouache painting. It's super easy, guys. This is like, you know, we want to de-stress during the summer. We don't want to make things difficult. And so that's why I thought I'll reinterpret this painting I did yesterday in a new painting for this channel. Okay, guys, let's get started. All right, so I'm going to go over some supplies that I have here. I have a piece of Arsh, 100% cotton cold pressed paper. I just taped it down with some scotch tape on a thick piece of cardboard just to hold it in place. It helps. Um, my palette here with all my paints in it. I talk about them as I use them, and I have them in the description box. Paper towel or a towel, whatever you have. Um, I'll be using a few brushes. I might be using a flat wash brush. This is a Princeton Velvet Touch 3 4 inch. Uh, or I might be using this 12 round from Neptune Princeton. Uh, basically all my brushes are Princeton. I have more than, I have a few that aren't. Um, can play around with the eight round, an eight long round, or maybe even the six, I don't know. A bunch of brushes, just have them at hand. Water jars up here. Um, I use my little spray bottle to activate my old paints here. Just like that. And um, like I said, I'm using some gouache. Now if you don't have a lot of gouache colors, um, I've talked about this in a couple of videos. You can just take the white gouache and mix it with your watercolor. I mean, it won't come out as vibrant as if you had gouache colors. You know, like I have this gouache, um, bright rose and yellow ochre, orange to interpret the, um, the flowers and some greens. So, cause you, you know, remember the paint is going to go on top of the watercolor. The greens could probably go on top of the water, but some of the other ones, no. So, it, it will work too. You can work, mix it with that. So simple, simple, simple. This is not very difficult. And what makes it difficult is when people just get in their own head because they see it and they're like, oh, it's too difficult. The key is water, how much, the amount of water you're using on this, you know, and how you're doing it. So this horizon line, I just put a horizon line right here. And uh, you can see the, the acrylic painting. And I've got like these pink tones and then like pale lavender kind of blue tones in the sky with watercolor just be careful when you're mixing the pink and the blue go great because it'll turn into purple but if you wanted to put in sunset colors like yellow and oranges that's a whole nother ball game and it gets a little tricky and you have to kind of 
kind of separate the blues from the yellows because we're doing green. You don't want that to happen. So how you do that is you let the yellows and the pinks kind of dry and then you can go and add the blues or you kind of just mix them but they're not going to get all green. So I'm just going to use my flat wash brush now and I'm going to just going to wash over the whole area that's going to be the sky. Now you can start the sky before or after. I like to do my skies first just how I like to do things. Some people would like to do them later. I don't know. It's up to you. I don't think it matters. I think you have to wait for the bottom or the top to dry either way. So I've just got a good amount of water here. <coughs> Excuse me. By the way, if you hear this weird noise in the background, like this humming noise, it's the AC because it is hot as Hades everywhere to, <laughs> in this country right now. So there I've got that color. And I already have like a nice pink here, like a bright rose kind of watered down. Right? And don't forget watercolor dries lighter. So I can just kind of stick that color. Oh, it's a little bit darker. A little too bright. So I'll add some more water. And I'll tap it on my paper towel. And I'm just going to kind of put a little line. I'm still using this flat wash brush. I could use a rounder brush too. I really want the pink kind of tone here. It will be lighter though. It's going to dry much lighter than this. Just a simple pink tone. I also have this color called Verdier Blue. I water down and I'll just start playing with adding in the colors here. A little more blue. Just a soft, simple kind of wash of color. I have ultramarine water down big time here. <laughs> it's almost like Verde Blue, but a little bit different. See? Going adding in that. So we're getting a little bit darker and deeper in the sky as we're going up. Now the clouds, there are many ways to do clouds, and I'm going to show you. You could use the paper towel way, the lifting the paint, but I like to do more natural. See, I'm just making these strokes going across. Like I said, I'm not doing the yellow. You could add a little yellow if you wanted to. Let's see, it's green. Don't want to do that. So I'm lifting it back out and going back and adding the pink. Because the pink and the ultramarine blue is fine because it'll be purple. And we don't mind that color. We do mind the yellow and the blue turning into green. <laughs> going back and add some more pink. Let's get a little purple going in there, which is kind of pretty. I'm going to take some more ultramarine blue. Now, my sky is pretty pale in the picture. We're not going to copy it exact, but you know, you get the feeling of I'm getting a little bit deeper on this side. I'm just kind of dabbing in the paint. See that? just interpreting the painting that I did in watercolor. So you've already seen like this white clouds already kind of formed by itself there. And I'm just tapping it and then I'm going to go over here and tap a little a couple of marks here. So I already feel like I have some nice clouds but you can take like a nice dry brush clean water on it. Okay, have your paper towel close by. And what you can do is like a mopping effect. You know, Twist it, turn it, lift it tap it back on the paper towel, see? You're like, you're like mopping up the paint. It's a simple technique and I like to twist and turn it and you get a nice pretty cloud. And the water will go back under, under areas in a more natural way so it won't look like these fake clouds. I'm going to lift some over here. There. To me I just want a soft looking sky. If I want to go back in, and you can make it darker, but I'll just keep that. I might go in a little bit more ultramarine blue. Get a little under here. It's going to stop where that paint is removed, and you can see the cloud more clearly. See? I can see clearly. Don't, I can't sing, so sorry, guys. <laughs> okay. So just going a little couple taps. It didn't take much effort to make this little pretty sky. We're not going to be reinventing the wheel here. Now, you definitely want to wait till the sky dries before you go to the bottom. And actually, I'm going to fix my bottom of the sky here because I feel like it's not straight. You definitely want to keep that straight, not wobbly. Going across. Okay, so you're going to finish this section. You're going to let it dry, and then we're going to work on the bottom half. 
which is the water, and then the flowers in front. Okay, we finished the top. Let's get into the water and then the ground area. So the water is going to be of different colors. You can keep this blue still, but I'm going to add some more turquoise kind of colors. And I've got this color called Peacock Blue, which is like a nice, pretty, bright, turquoisey color. You can mix that with some of the other colors. So you have a variety of tones here. Now we don't have to, we're not going to wet this, we're not going to wet this down like we did the sky. This, we're going to just take the colors that we mixed up here. Nice wet colors. And we're going to take our flat brush and we're going to start kind of a swipe, I would call it swiping. It's going to, if it's a little wet, you can always tap it on the paper towel. Just swiping the light color back here. Now, the greens are going to be starting like around here, halfway. Maybe, but it's going to be, like I said, more blues. So you can kind of picture if you're going to have the greens kind of here. Just picture your eye. You put some green in here. We'll just do a little nice wash of the blue going across. Try not to hit the pink because then it will turn purple. You can leave a little bit of white. See, just making these little lines. And then I'm adding in the peacock blue. Just simple like this. The white lines will indicate obviously white caps. That's why I like to use a flat wash brush. Some people use round brushes, that's fine. And I add a nice pretty blue color in here. Again, mixing in the blues. It's more of an interpretation. It doesn't have to be like this perfect, you know, um, waves. But I find the flat wash brush works well. I have quite a few videos using the flat wash brush. And I'm adding in different colors. You can add like a little, this is a lilac color. See, add a little lilac in there. Then we're getting like really imp impressionistic by our color choices. Even like, even thick Verdier blue. See? You can interpret kind of like a, an acrylic painting in a way like this. I have that tutorial on paint like Matisse. It's kind of similar when you're using a thick paint. Just getting the soft colors in here. Got the more turquoise color coming back. You can add a little ultramarine. See how we're doing this? I'm leaving some white spots. You can always leave the white spots. You can't leave them afterwards. You can always paint over them, but leave them in the beginning like this, and then you can go back. So you take it. Oh, got some green, but that's okay because green's kind of cool into the water. This part, the green, that's not a problem. This part with the green is a problem. <laughs> you see, I'm just making the simple strokes. And then adding in some ultimate. I'm getting a little darker down in here. Going in between, getting rid of some of the whites. Now, if you get rid of too much white, you can go back in with some white gouache. And you can add it. This is guess, very soothing kind of strokes. I'm holding it on the side here. Getting a little bit darker in the middle here. I'm going back and forth, as you can see, with the different colors with the paintbrush. Like I said, the green's going to come up in here. So I'm going down in here, kind of imagining it there, adding in some blue. Really just want a soft, pretty blue. Sometimes it helps to step back and look at your painting. Right? This nice little white. It's very, very soft. I might go back in, which I'm definitely going to do, but it's very, like, no differentiation between the two. So I'm going back in with the ultramarine blue, getting a little bit darker now. It's easier to build later than to do it in the beginning. Some people say what happened is that they went too dark too fast. You can take your time and layer it up. You know, I'm getting a little bit darker. Again, I have Prussian blue up here. I haven't even put that in there. You can add some of that deeper Prussian blue, whatever deeper blue you have. You can mix ultramarine with some Prussian blue. And then you get the nice dark strokes in there. For the water. 
See, now it's coming alive, right? The little wave kind of up and down. And I like to put different colors in. So I've got, like I showed you, the peacock blue. Ooh. It's some more water. It was pretty, pretty dry. Gonna add more water to that. Can add a little yellow to make it like turquoisey, greenish blue. It's a little darker here again. So that's what I would do for the water. Like I left a lot of white. You could do like a more of a wash down here because you know the green's going to be coming in here like in this section. That helps. Just a soft painting. We don't want to get it too harsh. You want to go back in and add some deeper colors. Go right ahead. I might do that in a little bit. So now we're going to work into the greens down here. Um, I use peacock blue a lot with my yellow. Make a nice pretty green. You might start off with just a simple green like this just to get where the greens are going to go or add some yellow, but we're going to be using some gouache so you don't have to do that. So we get some nice yellow green, add some more blue, medium green. So I'm just going to wash that in right here, grab me more water, add more blue, I'm just going to fill this in right here. This is the grassy part. And you can start to add some of this up in here. You really want to make sure that you've got your water the way you want it before we start doing the greens. Because once we start doing the greens, you can kind of tweak it, but it's going to be a lot more difficult. All right, so I'm going to fix my water. I like the way it's going right now. I'm going to get a little darkness in here. And we'll come back and we'll start working on our ground. So we paint the green in. I'm going to let this dry. And then we're going to start using some gouache and some watercolor and finishing it up. Okay, so once all that's dry, then we can start playing around with adding in the poppies and the flowers. I'll be using my Princeton 8 long round because there's a nice long point. Mix up some greens, you know, we've got yellow, peacock blue, okay, grab some more yellow, maybe more yellow, <laughs> so I get the lime green there. And we can start to do the, the little, just taking the brush, the grasses, and it, it actually is working fine going over the, um, the water. Now here I've interpreted long one kind of coming up here going all the way to the bottom by the way just taking your brush doing a lot of swiping up and down for the grasses now obviously I'm gonna have a little bit longer on this side up here right up into the water and then shorter ones on the bottom and a few kind of squeaking, squeaking out of the bottom here so I'm just starting off with the lighter green and you can add some darker green. I, make, I mix Prussian blue with some yellow, a little burnt umber. So you can add some darker tones, darker grasses going in here. Really just want this really loose kind of wispy kind of grass. And then we'll paint the flowers on top of that. You know, you throw everything in the kitchen sink when you're painting sometimes. I'm adding a little more peacock blue. Different kind of greens. Just really kind of get loose with this. You get the darker green, adding more Prussian blue. Going right in there, you can add a little burnt umber. Just gives it a different color, brownish green. Maybe you wanted it sweet and soft and you don't want that. So the brushing technique here would be totally different than an acrylic, right? I'm doing the dabbing, 
see him, watch me, t I'm talking dabbing, but like, see him kind of just pushing down the brush like this. I do like a nice long stem and I do the little dabs kind of next to it. This is where you might want to add the white gouache. I'm going to go medium green in here. You want a bunch of different greens. You do a little push down. See, I'm just kind of pushing down on the brush. Do, 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 do. You get those little marks. This doesn't take much effort. It's pretty easy. Just doing a little push down. Grabbing some Prussian blue, getting this section a little bit darker. And do that over here. You're just taking your brush. We're just doing the green for now. You can kind of fill in this part a little more if you want to, just kind of watering down your paint. And kind of just pushing and painting around. Now you look really just kind of dabbing it on its side. See how I'm taking the brush and kind of just pushing it on its side, just kind of playing around with it. Can add some deeper color this way, loosely. Without having to all these like not without having like all these little skinny lines, you can just kind of fill in the, you know, because acrylic paint you're really filling that in with texture and lots of loopy, lots of globs of paint. You're not doing that here with watercolor. So you're gonna kind of play around with adding a little dark blues and greens. See, and then leaving some of that on texture. Can also do some splattering of the paint. Right now I'm just kind of wiggling, getting some more out here. I'm just kind of pushing the paint around. All right, so at this point, we're going to be playing around with the gouache, right? So I've got some over here white gouache, I've got some yellow gouache and green gouache, orange and more yellow gouache. So the gouache is opaque, right? So I mix the yellow and the green. Add a little more white, makes it even more opaque. Now, keep in mind that the gouache is kind of rough on brushes, so you don't want to kind of use it all the time in really, really, really nice watercolor brushes. Get this even lighter. See, it's even, you get lighter with the white, and add a little yellow, white, yellow. Oh, got green gut in there. But you get the idea, right? So I'm just going to actually use this white. Like that. And see how light that is? And see what's, what's going to happen here. It's going to go right on top of all these colors. Adding another layer. Getting more yellow in here. I'm going to go right on top of that blue. And I'm just kind of tapping. Just doing these little tippy taps. Same thing in here. Like I said, if you wanted to splatter some of the paint. That can be kind of cool. Some more texture for all these little squiggles. So you're going to spend time just doing this for a little bit. You know, all around your little greens that you made the little stems or just kind of tip tapping that lighter, whiter green. You can have more yellow. See, I'm adding yellow right on my brush. Boom, boom, boom. Just moving this really fast. See how I'm just moving the yellow really fast? Just grabbed it on the brush with the green in there. Just playing around, pushing that paint around. And so this is the technique I would use to do something really loose, interpreted. You can grab even, like, you lose a lot of white gouache when you use gouache. And grab some more white right on the brush. Boom, with all the colors on my brush. See? We're getting that real interpretive, kind of fun, textural little doodads that make up this painting that I kind of did in acrylic, but now we're doing it in watercolor and a little bit of gouache. I'm just kind of tapping in some gouache, white gouache now. See? Now it's getting really fun. You can make bigger, you know, leaves darker leaves, different sections. Play around with that. You can go back in, even because it's squash in watercolor, are fun together. Take your darker blue, green. See, I've got some Prussian blue. Making really deep dark green. I'm going back in here. 
kind of tapping in this section here. So keep doing this until you feel like, okay, that looks good, right? Maybe you want some like really nice cool branches coming out here, right? It can get really dark. You can even add some browns in there. It's almost like blackish tones, blue. And kind of a section that's a little bit darker, like in the corner over here. I'm just doing this really loose, having fun. And then we're going to let that dry and we're going to come back and put the flowers in. Okay, so once that's dry, you can use your round brush, whatever brush you have. I might go play around with my filbert brush. Um, and then I'm going to put the orange flowers. Now I'm going to mix some uh, gouache, white gouache, some yellow gouache in with my orange. And I'm just going to put, see how you can just put that right on top of the color? So you just kind of zoom in so you can show you how to make these flowers. So it's kind of like a oval, I would say, my little loose um, poppies. Kind of like an oval, leave a little spot. So you're pushing one stroke, second stroke kind of, and then like a little one here. You do a bigger one down the bottom. So why this is important with the gouache is that you see how it's going right on top of that paint. Boom. And now you're going to have bigger ones towards the front. Much bigger ones. I add a little lighter color. And grab some more white, yellowish, whiter color on the left side, upper petal, and darker ones on the bottom. And then you're going to be doing smaller ones in the back, like tiny ones here. You know, bigger in the front, smaller on the back. But you see how I'm just kind of taking this brush? We can use a round brush too, I can show you that. Whoosh, whoosh. It's like a V, we kind of fill it in in a little bit and then put a little line on the bottom here. Boom. And then we'll put a dot in the middle for like the interpret the. Now I'm going to add some more yellow to that. I don't want it just plain old orange. But see, that's great about the gouache. It goes right on top of that paint. See, this one's going to be a little more yellow orange. And you can add that yellow orange on the outer side with a little white. Lighten up that side of the petals. I'm just you can just you can even just push down like little blobs on the top here and these little guys here back here. See, just a little push, push, push. Can add some yellow. I'm not really doing things specific like that's hard. I'm just pushing, pushing. So you want some variety of tones of yellowish, orange. Can add some of that to there. See how I'm just adding it on the left side? Not every single section. I'll go back and add some more white. I use a lot of white gouache, by the way. So yeah, a little white to this. See how it just lightens that up? Like the sun is kissing it. Just a little bit of white. Boom, boom. This one's a little bit lighter, so then you can add a darker orange in the bottom. See how that works? So you just kind of do this, fill this in until you feel like you've got enough flowers. You don't want to do overboard. So I'm going to do the, like little dabs up here. And get the little poppies. Poppy poppies. I'm going to add some white. Kind of playing around with color in here. White and yellow. Listen, you can add some purples in here. Interpret it however you want to. You know? I'm cleaning off my brush because I do want to add more white. Just itself. You know, there could have been the white could have been like another wildflower in the fields. Playing around with that and the greens. It's always good to squint your eye and see. If you have a lighter area, a darker area, same as in back out. Since so this side is kind of darker and this side's kind of lighter, you don't want all of it to look the same. So I think I want to have just kind of concentrate in the left and the middle. I'll add some more yellow over here. You can add a few in here, but don't want to keep it all the same. Then it's just kind of weird. 
doesn't look really natural. So I'm going back and adding some white in here. Kind of just in the center, the yellow and the white. This kind of area is highlighted. It's very light. See that? I'm getting up from my chair just to make sure I can see what I'm doing. <laughs> and then at the end, you know, if you feel like maybe this one's like made me want to add some more dark greens. You can still go ahead and do that. I have all these greens of gouache. Kind of fill it in. Even with the watercolor. See, I'm taking my watercolor. Kind of going back in here and adding some dark colors underneath some of the flowers. That's just going to pop them even more. See that? Maybe add some dark little leaves coming up here. I'll be playing with this for a little bit. And I don't want to bore you with the video of me playing with it, but you see. So then at the end, um, for the center, now I have black gouache over here in my palette. Just going to get this activated, getting it wet. I just put like a little dot in the center. It's really that simple. And you have your cute little poppies. Interpreted, same painting and watercolor and gouache. So kind of mixed media here. Right? And it could be splattering some more color and paint. So I might grab the yellow here, orange. Do a little splatter. Ooh, that's cute. I could even do some white, but I'd like that. Oh, it went everywhere on my sky, but that's okay. You get the idea. <laughs> Try to cover that part. Anyway, I'm going to lift up our tape for the reveal. A tape mix, when you lift it up, it's great. It's like a nice border. And then you have your cute little painting. Now, is it the same as this one? Mm, not quite. I might have to add some more little flowers falling way up in here. And some more white. You know, play around. And I have more space in here. But it's kind of similar, right? It's going to be different because acrylic's going to play different. And actually, I think I, what I was thinking about, which what I didn't do, is I didn't add some blues and like bl Verdier blues. You can play around with that. Put some pretty blues in here. Just going pretty thick. Could add some violet. I have some of that here. It's going to change the painting even more so. Add some pretty violets and some blues. So then it becomes kind of impressionistic. You know, I got that Verdier blue. Ooh, I just love this color. It's one of my favorite Holbein colors. So now it's just changed even more. So it's a little different than the painting we did. So I'm going to go back and add some more blues. And maybe even some more greens coming out here, right? You need to play around with that. So I had the greens coming way up here. I didn't even realize. I'm grabbing watercolor and gouache and playing around with this kind of stuff. So there you go. And I might go around here and, you know, put some more dark colors in here. Just grab some ultramarine blue. Just really play with this. I'm grabbing it, look, almost like it's right out of the tube. And then the Verdier blue. It's just going to change the painting. That's what you do. You can kind of come back and you kind of play around with it. But then it becomes like an impressionistic looking style painting. Which I really like. It's a lot of fun. It's different. Different. So let me know if it's something you enjoyed mixing the two mediums. Well, like really, gouache is so complementary to watercolor. This is kind of like a fun thing to do. It's relaxing. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Write a comment below if it's something you enjoyed. And I hope you guys are relaxing, enjoying your vacation if you have a vacation, and just taking your time, you know. See, I added the darker colors in my water here, and I might go back in and add some 
highlights. I can even add some white gouache in there. If I felt like if it got too much color, I can add a little bit of white gouache in here too. You know, play around with that. So thank you guys for stopping by my channel. You know, I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you're having a wonderful summer. See, I can't stop myself either. <laughs> All right, guys, take care and I'll speak to you soon.